Warning, manganese heptoxide is an incredibly dangerous compound. It is a strong oxidizer and highly reactive, and these experiments should not be performed without all proper safety precautions. If replicated, this must be done in a well-ventilated area or outside. Alright, so we're back for part 2 of my manganese heptoxide video. This concept was inspired by a thread I saw on r slash chemistry on reddit as I addressed in the previous part. In this video, I will be covering the reactions between manganese heptoxide and several substances. If you have not already seen part 1, I suggest you do as it goes into depth on the synthesis of the compound and safety concerns, and I'll include a link in the description. All of these reactions you will see here were performed outside, as you'll probably be able to tell from the shadow changing of my backdrop. I've included each of the substances in the description with a timestamp of where they begin. In case you're only interested in seeing one or two of them, I really recommend you watch all of them though. Now, let's get started. The typical reaction people tend to perform when showing off manganese heptoxide is with acetone, so I'll start with that. Here, you can see that as soon as the acetone makes contact, it goes up in flames. The reaction here is quite simple, where the acetone is oxidized by the manganese heptoxide into carbon dioxide in water. This actually happens for a very good majority of organic solvents. Next, we have a piece of paper towel. Paper towels are primarily composed of cellulose, which is an organic compound with many linked chains of D-glucose molecules. The overall reaction here is as shown, with N representing the amount of linked glucose molecules. At first, I used the dirty manganese heptoxide sample from a previous run. It's interesting how the paper towel just seems to melt away and dissolve into the liquid. When I used the new sample, the paper towel reacted much more vigorously and temporarily burst into flames. Because this was so interesting, I wanted to try another cellulose product with a much higher surface area, cotton. Because the manganese heptoxide is better able to come in contact with the cellulose due to the cotton's increased surface area, this reaction takes off much more rapidly. The exothermic nature of the reaction allows the cotton to catch fire and burn in air. Immediately after reacting the cotton, I wonder what would happen if you added a semi-reactive metal such as aluminum to the manganese heptoxide. Theoretically, the aluminum would be oxidized as shown to form aluminum oxide. Although this reaction did occur, it was far less spectacular than I had anticipated. Next, I wanted to see how manganese heptoxide would react with a biochemical molecule in preparation for the chicken flesh later on in this video. So I decided to use some extra virgin olive oil. The reactions here are a bit beyond my scope as I'm not entirely sure of the many mechanisms possible for the oxidation of the triglycerides and resulting fatty acids. In a general triglyceride made of only palmitic acid, I'd expect the manganese heptoxide to cleave the glycerol from the triglyceride first, leaving glycerol and the fatty acids. Then, both the glycerol and the different fatty acids would react separately with the manganese heptoxide. The fatty acids are oxidized into smaller chains, producing carbon dioxide and water, while the glycerol is decomposed directly into the CO2 and water. Now for the reaction. It's interesting how the hydrophobicity of the oil makes it coalesce at first, but the manganese heptoxide quickly reacts and bubbles with carbon dioxide and some manganese fumes. Mm -hmm. 
To explore this a bit further, I used an older sample of glycerin that I had laying around for another test. The glycerin reacts far more rapidly than the olive oil as it doesn't have the intermediate oxidation step as shown by the equation. You can see that it actually momentarily catches fire midway through the reaction. Now for the grand finale, I decided to try to replicate what might happen if you managed to spill a bunch of manganese heptoxide onto human flesh. To do this, I'll be using a piece of chicken breast. I actually created about 25 milliliters of manganese heptoxide in a small beaker. I highly advise against doing this, as the breakdown of the compound is far quicker in this quantity, and it could result in an explosion. After laying out the chicken, I poured on about half of the solution, and I let it sit. Here's a time lapse of what happened over the course of about 7 minutes. You can actually see the chicken being slightly singed as the proteins are being denatured, and it's essentially being cooked. On further examination, the chicken looks like it was cooked on a pan with some balsamic vinegar. Of course this is far more toxic and I would never advise eating anything you make out of a lab. After wiping the chicken off and breaking it in half, you can see that the chicken cooked all the way through. Considering that neither the chicken nor the petri dish were substantially warm, this is only due to the chemical processes involved of denaturing the proteins. As I mentioned in the previous part, disposal of manganese heptoxide is surprisingly simple. All you have to do is submerge it in some water, and it breaks down into a beautifully colored manganese 4 oxide. However, in this video I'll be testing its thermal decomposition. In part 1 of this video, I mentioned how manganese heptoxide decomposes at temperatures greater than 55 C. I decided to test this here by simply heating it with a blowtorch and setting it behind a makeshift blast shield. Note that this should never be performed in an uncontrolled environment, and this should be done outside as it's incredibly dangerous. After some struggles with the blowtorch, I get the manganese heptoxide to react somewhat explosively, but it wasn't really that impressive. It more or less just spewed bits of dark solution out of the beaker and gave it off a thick white smoke which I presume to be ozone. I included some of the possible decomposition products on screen. I cannot stress enough how dangerously stupid this is, and how it should never really be attempted, ever. If you happen to watch all the way through this video, thank you for taking the time to explore some of the reactions with manganese heptoxide with me. If you have any other suggestions for what you'd like to see it react with, let me know down in the comments, and I'll make a third part to this video. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this content and I'll see you next time.